Okay, it is Python on Hardware Time. Um, there's a lot going on in the world of CircuitPython, so I'm going to start off with that. Um, next month, August 19th, we are once again celebrating CircuitPython Day. We have an entire day's worth of activity. It's Friday, August 19th. We'll have stuff going on all during the day. We'll have show and tells. We'll have giveaways. Um, tune into all of the shows between now and then and you'll get a chance to probably win one of those circuit python tablets um and then we have a full day of uh folks who are just doing cool stuff with python on hardware and so that'll be our circuit python day coming up um sort of big news i think anyways um because this is always interesting this is the lead story in the newsletter the pi5 risk 5 asics project and this is an open source hardware chip and um they're making a community driven, well, they're, where they're describing it is a community driven RISC V based microcontroller with the ability to easily support CircuitPython and MicroPython. So, Lady Ada, you know a little bit about these things. Why is this interesting? And is this the future of uh, chip development? It could be. Um, this is interesting because, uh, well, it's interesting for two reasons. One, RISC V is a microcontroller architecture that has gotten a lot of attention lately because. Um, it's starting to be picked up by big in industry um, partners like Western Digital. Um, is you know makes chips with uh, Risk Five and, and High Five does as well, and a couple other companies, um, e Espresso, ESP, uh, and there's some a bunch of other chip companies that are making Risk Five cores, and um, especially pairing them with machine learning and AI stuff. And you know usually with free cores, people do stuff like an 8051, which is an 8-bit microcontroller. Maybe you could expand it to 16. But the Risk Five is like a true, like complete Risk architecture chip. It's 32-bit. It's quite advanced. It's got a full instruction set, and it's completely free. Um, no royalties required, unlike the ARM Cortex series. And so, you know, even though the RP2040 isn't like explicitly designed for use with CircuitPython and MicroPython, um, there's a lot of design decisions they made that do make it a really great uh, embedded Python chip. And so, it's interesting to see. Um, you know, that's a dual core Cortex M0. It's interesting to see, can we make true, fully open source hardware that can run um, interpreted languages? And, you know, I think people have um, come up with uh, theoretical designs for the RISC-V, but I think they're actually going to try to manufacture and ship a chip uh, that is, is specifically designed for, I mean, of course, they'll be able to run other languages, but designed for running high-level languages um, using a fully open source from top to bottom so core. So theoretically, this could be one of the first truly open source hardware like uh, laptops. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like back in the day, there was Transmeta and like there was a lot of things for the, the old timers. Um, but this is an open source hardware chip. It could run open source software like CircuitPython. And it's an interpreted language like Python, and the full stack from hardware to software could be open source. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. I mean, the tough part is the peripherals, um, but you know, if they've got the time and you can't get chips, you might as well sit down and do them. Yeah. Uh, it could be really, it could be very neat. I think, I think it is interesting that they're deciding. You know, let's let's try to support um, MicroPython or uh, CircuitPython. I know that there's, I think, the FOMU is an FPGA that supports that runs a RISC-V core that runs Python. So it could be, or maybe it's the SOMU. I don't remember, There's a, they're very similarly named. Um, but I, I think this is really neat. So uh, check it out. I think okay. they're doing some fundraising right now. All right. Um, so uh, you can check it out on Group Gets, and also you can watch the progress on Hackster. Um, Banana for scale. Raspberry Pi staff made some RP2040 lightsabers. They use uh, Featherwing, CircuitPython, some 3D printing. Um, we have some Pico add-ons. We're calling those bells. If you saw our video last week, we debuted cowbells, um, and you could see some of the logos and a little bit of the story behind you know, it. We just song. We've got cowbells. <laughs> There's ding, ding, more ding, cowbell. Ding, ding. Uh, I got a fever that I'll only be cured by some more Raspberry Pi Pico Pi bells. Um, and uh, you can check out the rest of the newsletter um, with a gigantic, massive amount of projects. Uh, one of the bits of uh, kudos we got that someone said is they called us a fair broker because we celebrate and have all types of Python on hardware, not just CircuitPython, not just MicroPython, not just Desktop Python, but whatever people are putting Python on, um, and there's you know a few different ways to do that on devices, and we you know we've written about this before. Um, but all the projects. So if you're doing something in MicroPython, totally okay. If you're doing CircuitPython, it's fine. If you're doing some neat thing on desktop that has some type of interaction uh, with hardware. Um, Throw it in. S send it over to us. We deliver this newsletter. 
every single week into your inbox. Um, you no can ads. also always check it out on the website if you don't want to subscribe. And that's over on adafruitdaily.com. It's a completely separate site because we don't like to mix up things like your store account and then stuff that you just want to read. So we decided to make a whole separate site, adafruitdaily.com, and that's just for newsletters. We don't spam, we don't market, we don't harvest any emails anywhere, anytime, but we wanted to go above and beyond and show that. 